typical week would probably be, well, when we were in Europe, game Sunday, in Monday, training, recovery, so ice baths, um, massage from the therapist, stretching, um, going on the bike, flushing your legs out. Then I have lunch, go home, and then later that afternoon, there's an osteopath that I work with. I see him and a sports um, performance therapist religiously. So I always see them before the week. That is one thing that I'm kind of set on. If I haven't seen them, then I am kind of... And you bring to, these in. This isn't a Yeah, yeah, thing. this is... So the club don't pay for that. I, I pay for that. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so he'll come to my house on a day after a game or maybe two days after. Um, so he, I have treatment with him for maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And then later on in the week, I'll have the day before the game or two days before the game, I'll have the sports performance therapist. He comes in and does like a lighter treatment on me, but... Um, he's something, someone I'm, I'm so sure of that I have to, I have to have and feel like it, um, I definitely think that that helps for me. And what about the other 1% stuff, whether it's about nutrition or diet, what, like, what do you do to give yourself an edge there? Yeah, I, I don't have a chef because personally I don't like, I like to just, when I'm at home, relax and have my own company. I've tried a chef before and it's good, but I feel like nutrition Nutri my nutrition's um, spot on. I'm always speaking to the nutritionist. I know what works and know what to eat at the right times and certain things like that. I've definitely learned through over the the period of my career. Each year I, I learn something new. Um, but I would say having the, the right people around me is is massive, you know, that small circle um, is is one of the most important things. How do you decide who gets in to be that, that inner circle? I think I always keep people at arm's length, um, but also I always get like a a good gauge of people. And um, I think, you know, when I've, if I have had a good game and I've scored and it's on Sky or whatever, you come in, you change your room and your phone's, I've got full of messages and of people, well done mate, blah, blah. but then it's, I learned something or when I've come in, I've had a stinker. Um, I think, First game of the season, we lost 5-1 to Newcastle, come in. And I, I only had a couple of messages, but off my best pals or off my missus saying, it's fine, don't worry. They're the people that you want to, you know, the true people that actually care about you. They're not there for the good times. They're there when it's not going so well as well. And what about getting carried away as a footballer? You know, I, I sometimes think that if you get into the Premier League really young, it's easy. But equally, if you've grafted and grafted and then it eventually happens, you can also allow that to get you carried away. I'm very interested in who keeps your feet on the ground, whether it's your parents, your wife, maybe the fact that you're a dad, right? Yeah. Maybe that makes a difference. But how are you not the guy that's going out thinking, I'm I'm the main man now, I'm one of the best strikers in the Premier League? My mates would hammer me, to be fair, um, and yeah, everyone around me. I feel like they wouldn't, um, they wouldn't be afraid to say, like, "Don't be an idiot." Have they ever had to? No, because I'm not that sort of. I, I always see myself as just people see footballers as like these superstars and stuff like that. I just see myself as like a normal person, and I feel like it's quite easy for me to. Um, I feel like I'm quite relatable to to some people because. I've come from obviously the lower leagues and um, I don't, you know, I'm not flash. I don't, I'm, I feel like I'm very well uh, grounded and want to come across as quite normal. So um, I never want to be a flash person. So I wouldn't want to come across like that. We actually sent a message to one of your former bosses, right? Just saying, look, we're going to chat to Wally. I'd love to know what you think. Right, okay. And he was with you earlier in your career. He said... Did you know that less than half of Brits eat breakfast every day of the week? I mean, that's amazing, but why? Well, it's because we're all time poor, especially in the mornings. So we compromise. My fix is Huel's nutritionally complete high protein shake, a complete meal in a bottle that slots perfectly into my life. Head to the link in the description for a free t-shirt on your first order with Huel. How can you resist that? Incredible presser of the ball, unbelievable output on the pitch, amazing kid lacks belief at times. Is that fair? We're talking not about the Ollie that's sitting in front of us today. This is with, you know, we're going back 
oh, seven or eight years. Oh, okay. To that yeah. Point. That, yeah. That's one thing that um, has definitely throughout my career, I've, I've started to believe in myself more, but the belief is, was one thing that made me, was holding me back. Um, I always believed in myself, but not to the point where it was, you know, you need to be kind of borderline a bit of, have that bit of arrogance, you know, that self-belief that no one's going to stop you and um, you're confident in your own ability. So tell us about the distinction then and how you've gone about building that. I'd say mindset is the the most important thing. You know, you can, your brain can tell you a lot of things. You can have self-doubt. Um, there may still be moments where I have self-doubt in the morning and just being okay with your thoughts because everyone has thoughts, but just being okay with, oh, that's just a thought that comes into your head and you kind of can trick your brain into believing different things. Um, and I think, yeah, just working on my mindset and um, just making sure going into the game, I've got everything off my chest. I I speak to um, a life coach um, who's definitely, since I've been working with him, he's definitely helped me. Um, and yeah, I think the the mind is probably the most powerful thing because people don't, they train every day physically in the gym, but it takes a lot to, to change your mindset. So when did that relationship begin with the life coach? Um, it was pretty much actually just before the boss come in. Uh, what, what, at Villa? At Villa, yeah. Okay. So before Una Emery came in, I tried to use him before and then I thought this guy's kind of... I was just like, no, I had, I think, a couple of good games and I was like, oh, I don't really need to use him anymore. Whereas I've learned that, you know, it's consistency. And like I said, being consistent every day, you know, no matter if you have a good day or a bad day, if I haven't scored or if I've scored three goals, I'll still speak to him. I still speak to him before a game and after games um, to make sure I debrief on everything and then I can move on to the next game. And yeah, since he's he's came in... Um, it's helped me a lot. So if someone was to have watched you when you were playing at Brentford before you started this relationship and then watch you now at Villa thriving, that the relationship is is active, what would be the big difference they'd see between the Oli then and the Oli today? I think physically um, they would probably say I look a lot more powerful because um, when I first joined Brentford I wasn't um, too familiar with going to the gym and, well, I used to go to the gym, but I used to do beach weights, as I'd say. Whereas now I'd, uh, yeah, I, I do performance specific weights um, in the gym, you know, mostly every day, um, working on little things to improve on. And then I think they would think I'm more focused, um, aggressive, but more aggressive, not as in bullying people, but, you know, if that's, the runs I'm making or when I'm with the ball, just being more direct and, and positive. So, yeah, I would, I would say a, probably a more p mature, grown-up. And will you now call him even if you feel great and you've got no issues and life's fine and you're about to play a game, you'll still pick up the phone? Yeah, I will, actually. Before, I'd be like, well, I don't need to call him, but sometimes I just need to... Sometimes I just call him for a chat and um, just to check in and sometimes pick his brains on things. Um yeah, because it's just it's just nice to improve. And I, I never feel like I want to reach out what, just when I need something. Mm. Um, I'm not that sort of person. So, yeah, I speak to him quite often, I would say. 